Good morning, everyone. Happy rainy Saturday. I hope you are all warm and dry. Um, I'm sitting outside of 13 William Road in Rockaway right now waiting for my clients. Um, we actually already closed on this house two weeks ago, but the sellers just moved out. So I figured I would take this opportunity while I have a few minutes to kill to explain what happens when we have a disconnect in timelines during transactions because this doesn't happen all the time, but it's also not that uncommon. So if you are buying a house or you're selling, and your timelines don't match up. Let's say in this case, um, the sellers needed extra time because she is moving into her daughter's house and they're doing construction on the house still. So she needed more time to move out, but my buyers needed to close because their rate lock was expiring. So what do we do? We've got one timeline here, one timeline here. The solution is a use and occupancy agreement, which is like a short-term rent back that's done on a per diem rate. And that per diem rate is normally calculated on the principal interest in taxes of what the new buyer is paying for the house. Uh, and then that seller is just paying back the buyer for every day that they're staying in the property. So technically, the buyer owns the house, the insurance is under the buyer, the uh, every, everything is under the buyer. It's the buyer's house, but they're renting it back to the seller until the seller can move out. Usually this is the easiest solution than trying to rearrange all of the dates or putting everybody in a panic because now we're running against timelines that are very important. So um, the only caveats to this are A, again, somebody else is occupying your house. So if you're not comfortable with that or you're worried about insurance liabilities, maybe not the best solution for you. The second caveat is that um, there is a occupancy requirement for primary mortgages. So if this is going to be your primary residence, you have to occupy it within 60 days of closing on the house. So a long term use and occupancy agreement is not a good idea. That said, if you have to do construction on the house, you need to calculate that in with your timeline as well because the mortgage lender is going to want to see that you're actually occupying that residence within 60 days of closing. So just to recap, again, if you are thinking about buying and selling, you're worried about your timelines, there's a disconnect in when you can close and when the seller can move out, the best thing that you can do is work on a use and occupancy agreement. If you have questions about that, feel free to leave a comment or you can call me, whatever. Have a great day. Bye.